You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. Looking to hone your music improv chops or perhaps discover them for the first time? Next weekend, the Manitoba Conservatory of Music and the Arts presents an improvisation workshop with pianist and instructor Carter Graham. To hear a little bit more, it's my pleasure to welcome Carter to Classic 107. Hey, man. Hey, Simon. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. It's, it's been a while. Uh, for listeners, a little recap. We went to music school together at the U of M. Before that, we graduated Kelvin High School. Before that, we were at River Heights Junior High, though I think we first met on the soccer pitch in grade six. Does that sound I'm right? I'm so happy you brought that up because I was going to bring that up. I was like, I don't know if you remember, but we played <laughs> soccer a long time. I think we were, what, 10 years old or oh, something? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> we I, keep kind of running into each other. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I mean, I remember you being introduced as Carter, who plays piano and soccer uh, back then. And then I, Random. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was Jordan. I think Jordan um, described you that way in short. Sounds like something he would say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I do definitely remember you um, in, in, in jazz band, in junior high, playing trumpet and also keyboard. Is that when you really started to explore the, the jazz side of things and, and improv at the piano? Yeah, I, I honestly, where, where I first remember getting excited about jazz was going to the Brandon Jazz Festival, which unfortunately I heard is just uh, dissolved. I don't think it exists anymore. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they get something coming back in the you know future. Uh, I guess another, you know, um, hit from this pandemic. But uh, yeah, that's where I, I went on a school trip. I was just in concert band. I was playing piano. I just kind of started getting interested in Oscar Peterson. That was the, my first kind of, you know, my, my gateway drug, if you will, into jazz. And um, yeah, just just got interested. And I saw people playing on the stage and they're having so much fun. And it was like a group thing. And I was like, oh, that looks really fun. And I'd like to do that. And then the next year I joined the jazz band. And from there on, I was kind of just interested in trying to learn it. Yeah, shout out to Miss Wall, uh, who ran that Absolutely. Band back great, in grade eight. Absolutely, great teacher. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what first interested you in in that element? In was it the fact that you know it just it seemed like a lot of fun was being had on stage, or or was it just something different from what you typically experienced as a as a pianist before that? Yeah, I think it's funny because now as a teacher, you kind of run into certain narratives from students who maybe they've you know they've trained classical like as a classical pianist or, or something like that. And I think what, what might have been appealing, whether I knew it or not at the time, was the fact that it offered another way to play music. So one was with others. And the fact that you didn't have to be locked a, a, alone in a room forever. And um, and and through, through jazz, like this didn't happen right away, but later on it was like, oh, this is why scales matter. Because before I was like, well, I'm just gonna read this, this piece of music. Why do I need to know how to play, you know, D flat major and four octaves? down i never do, really usually don't do that i read what's in, in front of me so to me it was sort of a liberation from the page in a way which you know i still love reading music i still love playing in fact i'm still working on a bach feed right now it's for technique i love that music but yeah it offered another avenue of exploring music i think i, I think that was the big thing that stood out to me so you're back in town now after uh, doing a master's down at Michigan State, also spending some time in New York, amongst other places, and, and you're ready to impart some of that wisdom um, at, at the MCMA. So let's get uh, a little bit more into this improv workshop and how it's going to be structured. I guess, first things first, uh, I, I imagine that students will have to have some sort of, of previous musical experience, right? Yeah, it's sort of, it's somewhat structured around a little bit of like you've played for a while and you at, at, at base level would be ideal if you knew all of your major scales and what that can mean. It means different things for different people. Um, it's going to be very, very, you know, beginner and, and it, it depending on, you know, I'll read the room if it's if it's a little more uh, advanced than that, then we can we can push further, further on. I always have more stuff to, to, to do. Um, but yeah, if, if there's a baseline knowledge of like, you know, your scales, that's like a huge component to it is just, just so we can have the discussion around how do we approach improvising it, it, it kind of speeds up the process. It's not absolutely necessary. Um, you know, if you come in and you have a, an amazing, you know, your ears is, is great. That also like, that's ideal. We, we want to be able to hear what we play and that, that's the actual end goal, but yes. So the theory does not come first, the theory comes after, but the theory does help us when we're say in a group discussing and like, okay, how do we approach playing over these chord changes or how do we play a song or how do we improvise things like that? So yeah, yeah. a little bit of baseline, um, knowledge would be ideal. Um, but yeah, that, that would be about it. And then what about instrument wise? Like this isn't just for pianists, right? All, all instruments are welcome. 
absolutely. And and also want to point out it would be open to vocalists as well. As yeah. well, I mean, um, especially in, in in fact, something I'm I'm more and more interested in the older I get is is uh, just singing in general. Mm. Um, and, and trying to access what I hear in my head and then transferring it to my instrument rather than, especially on piano, the danger is we don't have to craft a sound before we, we play a key and the key does the work for us. Whereas on a horn or a voice, you have to, I, you know, as I imagine it as a non-vocalist, you have to sort of think of your airflow and that amount of airflow dictates what, what pitch will come out of you and how strong it is or how, you know, filling up, how much it fills up a room. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's open to anyone who plays any instrument and, uh, please bring your instrument to the, the session. Yes. So you've, you've talked a little bit about this already. Um, but I, I'm just thinking about, you know, the ways that you're going to explore improvisation. I imagine melodically, but also harmonically too, right? Yeah. And, and honestly, rhythmically, I think, mm, and the other thing that as, as I get, you know, as I continue my my own exploration of this mu this amazing music, um, I, and this was told to me by one of my uh, professors at MSU, Xavier Davis, who is the brother of former J professor of drum set at U of Manitoba, Quincy Davis. Yeah. So I got to study with two brothers, uh, incredible so musicians. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to them. Um, he he mentioned to me about how he he pretty much hears rhythm before pitch and that then he's attempting to assign a pitch to a rhythm. So I think rhythm actually is quite liberating in that sense too, that it can take some of the guesswork out of what note to play. And, and the idea that, it, you know, it kind of sounds like a throwaway phrase. There's no wrong notes. There, there's some truth to that. And it's kind of how we use those notes <laughs> more so. Uh, but yeah, we're going to explore harmony. Absolutely. Harmony is a huge part of this. And, and we're going to talk about rhythm and we're going to talk about, you know, scale structure. Cause the other thing that a big revelation for me was that harmony comes from the scales, right? Yeah, comes, yeah, yeah. That's where it's coming from. So it also opened the door for me when I was in terms of like harmonic, you know, playing chords and things like that. It was like, because initially you're taught, okay, play this chord when you see this chord voice, you know, name on the page. And that's very constrictive, but I get why, because you're new and you, you got to have something to play. But eventually it was like, well, okay, I'm always doing this. How do I make it music out of that? And so, yes, scales are the, are the pathway to that. So. Um, I'm also having um, big flashbacks, not to make this a trip down memory lane, but to my <laughs> music theory textbook, the same one that you have, that was harmony through melody, right? Like that, yeah, that same exploration. It's wild. It's and they have a point. <laughs> yeah, they certainly do. Uh, Richie and Horton. It was a yeah. Anyway, and it's, I'm, I think it's on the the shelf behind me here. But I guess oh, one last thing is we are talking about this on a, a classical music morning show. And if there's somebody listening right now and thinking like I, I don't know, it sounds sort of intimidating or that's not my shtick. Like what what would you say to those people who you know are just kind of on the fence about exploring improvisation? Well, I can say as a, you know, someone who's been there, done that, that yes, being in a room with people, a group, there's a lot of internal, or it's not for everyone, but for me, there was often internal fear of my own capabilities. And, you know, I would get nervous and I still get nervous when I play. I'm, and I'm actually okay with that now. I don't mind. Uh, usually not to the point where it shuts me down, but yeah, I actually welcome being a little bit you know, edgy before. And then like, once you start playing, then that all leaves you. Um, I would say, don't, don't totally succumb to that feeling and, and go ahead and step out of that comfort zone and you'll be surprised. And I think it's, I think it's more beneficial when you do ask that question you're scared to ask, because honestly, I'm not, I'm not there to judge anybody. That's not what I do. Uh, I want to teach people what I, this music that I think is really beautiful uh, to the best of my abilities. And that it, I think, yeah, a lot of students have that sort of like, well, they already kind of set themselves up. They already tell themselves they can't do something. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself that you can and go and go ahead and try it. You might surprise yourself. And yeah, by all means, I, you know, I, I want it to be a part participation uh, class. That, that's the whole point of this. Yeah, participation, experimentation. It sounds like it's going to be a great workshop, Carter. So uh, thank you so much for telling us uh, a little bit about it. W wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, the MCMA Improvisation Workshop takes place in person on Saturday, February 26th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. For more details, visit Classic107.com or MCMA.ca.